All right, we're going to get started <clears throat> with a video from uh, biology. This is about the biology 1105, and uh, this particular lesson is about the heart. And back when I was in college, I uh, took some CPR classes and actually became a CPR instructor for a short time. And uh, so I remember having to study the heart and came up with a diagram that helped me understand how the blood flows through the heart. So we're going to talk about that today and just cover some of the important uh, terms in here. If you look at page, uh, let's see, 17 in the pace, and then on the next page as well, 18 and 19, there are some important diagrams up here with a lot of terminology. And uh, we're going to just do a quick walkthrough of these parts of the heart and uh, where the blood's flowing, okay? Number one, <clears throat> uh, and this is a little confusing sometimes to students, but um, the, the pace is not incorrect when it says that this is the right side of the heart and this is the left. And it always kind of confused me. I remember when I would see that and think, ah, that's not, this is the left and this is the right. But they do this because if a doctor were looking at a patient, this would be the patient's right side of their heart, and this is their left side, okay? Because this is my right hand, my left hand. So the doctor looking in would see their, the patient's right and left. Um, so it's reversed from what you and your right hand and left hand would look like, okay? Now let's take um, how the blood flows. <clears throat> the top the heart's actually divided. You like this heart shape here, okay? <laughs> Obviously, that's not exactly how the uh, heart is shaped. But um, the heart has four main chambers, okay? The top two chambers are called the atriums. The bottom two are the ventricles. And it's easy to remember that because the bottom of this heart, you see the V shape, okay? That'll help you remember that the ventricles are at the bottom. But when the uh, blood from the body, and a lot of it's from the brain as well, <clears throat> and the oxygen has already gotten out of the blood, okay? So each of those blood cells are kind of like a, uh, I liken it to a raft, okay? It's kind of like a lifeboat or a raft floating in a river. And the oxygen has been in the boat floating along, but when it gets to the parts of the body that need the oxygen, the oxygen hops out and uh, crawls into the cells where the oxygen is needed, the carbon dioxide that the cells have given off then hop on. And so those blood corpuscles are traveling back up here and they have given up the oxygen and gained carbon dioxide. Now the blood, we call this the deoxygenated blood. It travels through the veins, okay? And the way to remember that is this blood is in vain. There's no oxygen left in it. It's just vain blood. <laughs> and it's flowing into the right atrium. From there, it flows through a valve and goes into the right ventricle, okay? From the right ventricle, now I'm going to draw the arrow coming out here just to make it simpler, but it actually, all these valves are coming out of, or tubes, Blood vessels are coming out of the top of the heart, <clears throat> but we're going to just for sake of illustration il illustrate that it's coming out of this right ventricle and it goes to the lungs. Now in the lungs would be where the carbon dioxide gets out of those little boats, the blood cells, and the oxygen gets picked up, all right? And the uh, hemoglobin in the blood is kind of like little magnets that just attract the oxygen and pull it right in, okay? The, the oxygenated blood then, after it's gone through the lungs, flows and comes into the atrium. So remember, the atrium is where blood is received into the heart, and then the ventricles are where it pumps out. So then it goes through a valve into the other side, uh, the bottom side, and then from this ventricle, it's pumped out and goes to all parts of the body including the brain, which would be obviously way up at the top there. A lot of the blood goes to the brain, and then a lot of it to the body. When it gets to all of the uh, small blood vessels called capillaries, 
That's where the actual transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. All right. So again, just to recap, the deoxygenated blood <coughs> excuse me, enters the right atrium, goes through a valve into the left ventricle. From the ventricle, it goes into the lungs, becomes oxygenated, flows back into the left atrium, through a valve into the left ventricle, and then from there out to the body. And it just continues to pump, all right? One other important term here that I'll just point out, and that is that this, there's a heavy, heavy wall between the right and left sides of the heart, and that is the septum, all right? And then there are actually blood vessels that just feed the heart, because the heart needs a lot of oxygen as well. There's a lot of muscle cells that are pumping, and uh, the pace kind of talks about some of those blood vessels, and if one of them gets clogged, it can actually cause part of the heart to stop pumping, and that's what we call a heart attack. And there's other parts, and they give the terminology, the aorta, and um, some of the vena cava and some of the other specific names that you can study. But if you look at the diagram on page 17 now, and just kind of study this, this will recap what we went over here on the board. And then these diagrams up here at the top will show again the parts of the heart and label the specific names that you need to know. And so hopefully that'll help you. Maybe even re-sketch uh, in your own notes this diagram that we have on the board and label it some uh, even better and see if that helps you prepare for the upcoming checkup.